Hey everybody, it's Ed and welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's great to have you along. Wanted to talk today about the Stream Deck and I think I mentioned this a few times. Uh, I received this as a gift for Father's Day from Trey and I, what I got was the Stream Deck Mini. And you'll be able to see that on my Things I Use page on the blog, but also in this particular description below. So it's an affiliate link. It's something I use. I'm just testing it out. I've been using it for a little bit just to try and streamline some workflows. I'm going to walk you through that. And I'm also going to talk about how really easy it is to customize this piece of technology. And, and I've got to admit, I'm extremely impressed so far. It does a lot of things really well. A little frustrating in the learning curve in some places, but I think the minute you get over that and you start to understand what the actual technology does and how it can make the processes you do easier, uh, the better off you'll be. Here it is in the top corner, and then you'll see it move around. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and use it completely for this video. So whenever you see me transition a screen, whenever you see me move to a different camera view, I'm going to try and do that in real time and leave this visible so you'll actually see my hand uh, go over it. I did have to turn the brightness way down on the stream deck to make it visible on camera. It actually looks even better than what you're seeing right now. And this is a 4K camera. It'll probably only export in 1080p. But I wanted you to see as close as I could how crisp this is. Now, when you go to your regular brightness, it's going to be really, really cool. Let's go ahead and let's jump into the demo. So that's enough early stuff. And uh, we will see you in just a second. As I said, I'm going to try and do this all in real time as much as possible. There will be some post edits, I'm sure, just to cut out some dead space. But at the same point, I want to try and show it as much as possible. So what you'll notice here on the screen to my left, and let me change the scene real quick and show you how that process works. So for here, I would go into scenes, which are right here at the bottom, and you'll see it pops up with all of my different scenes. The one that's highlighted in a lighter color is the current scene that we're on. That is the demo scene. And I can change this by just pressing. This was the discussion scene that we were just on a minute ago. So pretty cool. And then I can also flip over to the screen share screen and to the multiple. So in the multiple, I'm trying to show as many things as possible. I'm trying to keep this in frame for you here and be able to kind of show you how this all works. Of course, if I want to zero in on the device itself a little more, that's when I'll go to this demo screen. And that's kind of how I've had my scene set up in the past. It just makes it easier for me to understand what my process should look like and, you know, how my flow works to give you the best experience possible in what I'm showing, whether it's a super note, whether it's, you know, obsidian. I want to make sure that my cameras and my angles are you know, in, in the right place to optimize the experience for you as a viewer. So in this case, it's really kind of a unique and interesting setup. I actually have my document camera, which is the 4K camera, all the way tilted down almost at a slant so that it captures the stream deck, which sits at an angle. And I'll take some pictures as well just to show you kind of what that looks like. But the nice thing about this is I have this folder structure with my scenes for recording. I also have a similar folder structure for my live streams. I haven't used this yet in that context, but for the upcoming live stream, I plan to use this to try and make that switching between scenes a little less clunky because the last thing you want to hear is me constantly clicking. You can see here what's active so you can understand and see that right now my microphone and OBS is recording. I didn't show you when I used this to open OBS because obviously I'm recording this. So OBS had to be open at the beginning. But that red is telling me both on the stream deck and on my screen that OBS is recording. You'll see right next to it, I have the pause button. I used that to kind of step away for a minute to make sure everything 
was configured. And then I can actually stop the recording by pressing the record button again. So it's a multi-action button. It'll turn it off and turn it on uh, with just the touch of that one button. You can also set it up to do a whole lot of other things too. I mean, this is a pretty minimal setup, but it does give me a lot of flexibility. And then I'm going to try and go from the outside here so it's a little bit easier for you to see. Now here, there's OBS at the top. I can go to my live stream for my uh, YouTube videos. I haven't done that yet. Like I said, I've kind of tested it a little and it seems like it works fine. Uh, we were just in that record folder that you see right here. There's also the stream folder, which gives you a little bit more. I can open ClipChamp here for when I go to edit this video, if I'm doing it on the PC. And then what's nice is not only do you have those folders for specific types of tasks, but you also have pages. So you can build different pages and you'll see here that there are arrows on the left and well, you can place these wherever you want, but I put them on top and bottom. Some people and some of the ways I've seen it is it's here and down here in this corner. It's really up to you how you want to do that but it allows you to create shortcuts and do different things. Now, what's really neat about this is Stream Deck comes with a lot of plugins that let you customize the experience. And then you can also create your own custom buttons. So for example, I use Obsidian and I use the SuperNote Partner app. So let's go back. We'll do this again in real time. And we'll go back to record. We'll go to scenes and then I'm going to go to multiple. So now you have me, you have the stream deck and you have my desktop. And now we're going to go back up. So you see we're back to this piece. Go back up one more layer and over. Now what I can do, and it's really, really quick. Usually let's hope it works in the demo the same way. If I want to open my SuperNote desktop app, bam, there it is. I don't have to click through a menu. I don't have to click double click on an icon. I just press a button and it pops right up. It opens really quickly. Now I do still, I haven't customized all the buttons yet to make it so that it will automatically close that program. But I know that there are ways you can do that. There's all kinds of macro settings and different keystroke settings that you can do. I haven't had it long enough to do all of that yet, but it does do, here comes Obsidian. Press the button, Obsidian pops up, there's my graph. Press Word, Word pops up. I mean, it works really, really quickly. And what's really nice about this too, is it doesn't have to just open a program. So let's look here and I'll show you you see that I have PowerPoint here. And by the way, the SuperNote and Obsidian icons, I made those. So I found a PNG, I made that into a nice little thumbnail, and then I put that on here as a custom. So they don't have a plugin. PowerPoint, however, does have a plugin. So you'll see I push into PowerPoint here, and now from here, if I wanted to, I could go through and advance and pull back my slides. PowerPoint's a little bit different because it's actually quite easy usually to just use the space bar or something like that to advance your slides. But you may not have that option or you may want to make sure you're staying focused on the camera. And again, you can drop and drag these buttons where you want. I may move these around and, and do some different things. And then the last page, this was by default with the Stream Deck. So you have everything from tutorials, uh, you can go through um, different links they give you for different things. So here I put some social media links for now. You have different apps. So you can, again, go to different places. You can do emojis directly from here and then i added this little dim button for this recording because i was having that trouble where it was washing out the color on the camera so you couldn't see what the the buttons actually looked like and again these aren't 
perfect representations. It's much crisper and clearer when you're actually in front of it. But these are much better because I've dimmed those down and tried to cut out that noise that you were getting with the video. You'll notice down here I have this little YouTube button. And I'll show you a little bit more about this, but I can jump into all of these different things. So this is what I'm really excited about. And this is, I know it's a recording, but this exists on the streaming side as well. So I can click into my dashboard. I can look at, I can go to my earnings page. I can look at the chat in the live stream, which I think is going to be really cool. And then there's this really nice little statistics plugin kind of a, a geeky thing for me, but I think it's interesting. And it shows me real time what my different statistics are. So it's a real quick way without opening a window and actually getting lost in the, you know, the melee that can be YouTube and looking at everything. I can just see, you know, how many views have I had? How many subscribers do I have? Now let's jump over. Let's go ahead back to the main page. And let's go into record actually scenes and let's look, take a look at the app itself. So we'll just go into the straight screen share app for this. When I open this up, the Steam Deck comes up with exactly what's already on the screen. So what you saw was there. We'll go ahead and stay on the multiple screen and I'll just and get rid of my camera here. We have this screen which mirrors the screen down in the bottom right. But if I double click here I can navigate and that is actually going to mirror what you see on the Stream Deck itself. So again it mirrors that activity which is kind of cool. And you have all of the things. What's neat about this, and what I think is probably one of the best features, I'm going to go ahead and maximize this so it's a little bit easier for you to see. To me, one of the best features is, even though this is a small unit, and I was talking about this to Trey just the other day, that I was kind of amazed. I thought you were going to be very limited as to how many buttons and pages, and I didn't even know about the folder structure at the time when I got it. But you're not. I can sit here and I can add up to 10 pages of buttons. Now, I only have three. And they automatically, as you create them, put in those navigation buttons. And then they're really easy to delete. So you just go ahead and delete them. You can duplicate if you want certain things to be the same. You can pin icons. So again, you have all of these different components that you can do. And you can, the folders to me were what were so amazing because then I was able to say, okay, you know, I want all of my streaming stuff on one page and my recording stuff. I don't want that to be in like a bunch of different places. So I made it really easy for me to say, okay, let's have a stream folder. And in that stream folder, here I can start my stream from YouTube and I can start the OBS stream right here with a click of the button. I can also then go to my scenes page. Now all of this is going to be happening off camera. So instead of me having to click around, look over it wherever I'm at, do all of these different things, I can just right here as I'm talking to the camera, press a button and make the change. It's really nice. It's really seamless and a lot of fun. And, and I think that's what's cool about the folder structure. And then I can also have, again, those custom buttons. So I can look at the different things here. And then in the record, a lot of that is duplicated. Now, instead of the stream buttons here, you're going to see the record and you're going to see the, the pause. And then again, you're going to see the scenes. And I may come up with the fifth scene there. You're going to see audio, turn on or off the Yeti microphone. I could have another microphone here, which I may do at some point with one of the lavalier mics. And then I could choose right from here which source I wanted to use. And again, I can increase, decrease, or mute volume in total from these buttons along the bottom. One nice thing about this are the sheer amount of plugins 
that Stream Deck has. And I'll link uh, a video in the description to Cam Shand. And Cam did this amazing desk, custom built desk for his gaming. And he took one of the Stream Decks, I believe it's this one that's up here in the right corner. Uh, that has the knobs and he tore it apart and he used all of the components in his desk. But one thing he really commented on and I a hundred percent agree is just how easy this is to use. You just pull things in, but they have all kinds of different graphics. They have badges, alerts, overlays. Uh, it's just really cool. Different icon packs that you can choose from. And you can look through and see, okay, well, do I want a custom set of icon packs? If you like Pokemon, there it is. All of that is right there. And it's it's really, really cool. Other graphics, you can do some uh, different video things, audio, 3D art. Just a lot of places and things in the um, marketplace that are really neat. And for plugins, and this is where you've seen some of the stuff that I have on mine, there's OBS. You get the plugin, and I'll show you that here in just a second, how that looks. Uh, but also Discord. And I got, I have the Discord plugin. I haven't used it yet, but it's there. And you can go all the way down. There's YouTube, there's Twitch, you know, things that I don't necessarily use, but a lot of people would. And I think it's important to understand, you know, that they're really trying to make this as customizable as possible. And you can always search for specific plugins. Uh, I searched for Obsidian and I searched for Supernote. They weren't there. So I just went ahead and created my own. Uh, you can also do links. Let's say that I want to check uh, my blog. I created a link here and you can make whatever icon you want. They didn't have a really good blogger icon at the time. I might have to tweak that and make that, uh, but I just put the standard generic. This shows that it's a hyperlink and I'll press this and I'm right to my blog. So it's that quick. It really works well. And the same if I want to check on uh, Facebook or if I want to go to YouTube, Again, the YouTube link does more, so I do different things. I want to go to my dashboard, so I press it. Now it's going to take me directly to the dashboard, and this is for the upcoming live stream that we have, and it's telling me to go ahead and enter my uh, information. Uh, but if I wanted to check ad revenue, if I wanted to look at chat, if I just wanted to go to my profile, um, well, that one's not working because that's actually for the live stream. But I can check all of these different things. And again, you'll see that mirroring on each one of the screens, which is really nice. Let me show you really quick. Let's create a blank page. And I'm going to show you just how quickly you can set this up if you have the plugins. So I don't have Discord. Uh, it's something that I've always been interested in and I may do in the future. But here's the plugin for that. So let's say that I wanted to set some of this up. Again, I don't know what I would be setting up yet, but you know, I wanted to do push to talk. And then I wanted to do mute. Does that make sense? And I just pull these over and a nice touch, and you'll notice this on some of my icons, is you can label them as well. And see, it's asking me to launch Discord so that it can confirm all of these settings. But the idea of having, you know, just different components and it's drop and drag, that's really, really cool. And then you can set audio device. So let's just say we want that to be our Discord page. Let's create another page and you know, I'll definitely delete these after this. But let's say that now I want to go ahead and I want to do a folder. So I can go here and I can say, okay, well, what do I want to be in this folder? Right now it's just blank. And let's call this links. Now I can double click right here. So I don't have to actually go to the stream deck. And yet you'll see down on the bottom right, all of that is being captured in real time. 
and I can say, okay, this is my new page and I want to be able to, but let's say camera hub, which again, I don't have right now, but I can just drag that right in. Set camera, just camera, and of course, and then I can add in effects. So all of those things that quickly, I could set Google. So let's just say I want a Google page. And I just put in google.com. And it automatically, because of the website, pulled in an icon. Kind of neat. So now I'll press that. And there we go. I have my Google search in one press of a button. You can do multiple action buttons. This one I want to mess around with quite a bit because I think it would be really interesting. And what you can do here is you can have different actions happen. So for example, let's say I want to open Obsidian and the Supernote Partner Cloud app at the same time. So I can create that. And what you'll notice there is when I press that button and I can name it, I could do something different. But you'll see that Obsidian opened and so did the Supernote Partner Cloud. Now what you can do with that, which is really important and I think interesting, is you can then add in a delay. Let's say that you wanted to uh, not have all of these programs open all at once, or let's say that you wanted to uh, open several things in OBS or in YouTube, and you wanted them to be open separately, but you wanted them to open around the same time. You could press the button and you could sequence with this delay, and you could say, okay, I want my delay to be a thousand milliseconds. Now what you'll notice this time when I hit it and just watch for it, you'll notice Obsidian opened and then the Supernote app opened. And that's really cool because you could potentially, and I think that's something that we would just have to see, you know, in practice and kind of fiddle with the settings. Potentially what you could do is open things within a program. One thing to remember about when you're adding something like this to open a file, some of it could be tricky. ClipChamp was tricky for me to be able to open anything, but there are two ways. You can select a folder, so if you know exactly where something is, you can pull this open and you can go find it uh, for what you need. Another nice feature is if you click here, it'll take you into some of your most used programs. So you'll see here that you have Chrome, Drive, uh, PowerPoint, and so it'll take you to that shortcut, which will then open that program. So it's a nice way to just bypass trying to locate the actual exe file. And that's the multi-action function. Again, pretty easy to use, pretty interesting. I think it's an, a really neat tool. I, I love the, the folders idea. I think that this is something that I'm going to find extremely useful. All right, I do want to show one more thing really quickly here because I think it's important. And we're going to flip back over to this mode. And the reason why this is important is that you may not be willing to spend uh, the $60 that this Stream Deck Mini costs. Of course, you can go up. You can buy uh, the larger Stream Decks as well. But for this particular model, you get all of this functionality, but you do have to go through multiple pages and do some different things. One thing I found really interesting in demoing this, and you get a 30-day free trial if you want to do this, uh, you can actually, Stream Deck has an app. And once you sync that with your uh, Stream Deck account, you can then... It's $4.99 a month, or you can pay $25 for the whole year. So for a whole year, and roughly half or a little bit less the cost than you were spending on the Stream Deck actual appliance, you could have it here. What's nice about this is you have all of the same functionality, and you get more buttons, so you can get a larger canvas. You can use this on your... Uh, phone. Uh, I just use the Galaxy S23, so it's not the largest phone, but you could use it on a larger phone. You can use it on a tablet. 
a lot of different places to be able to make this work. And you'll notice I've got a lot more stuff here. I can show desktop, I can show take a screenshot. I have some of the same things that I already had. So you can go into those folders and you can see some of the different components. It goes back really quickly. It's very responsive. And just to show you how responsive, if I press Obsidian, Obsidian opens right up. If I press Supernote, Supernote opens right up. It's really, really an interesting way to be able to have that extended functionality. Or if you're not like me, I actually love the, the Stream Deck button because I can feel it when I press it. You get a little bit of haptic feedback when you press one of these. You can feel it, but it's not the same. And I just, I really like to be able to know that I pressed the button uh, without having to, to worry about whether or not I made that happen or did that the right way. But again, what you can see here, and let's go ahead and go into scenes, and you can see it's mirroring exactly what we have on the screen. So when I go over to discussion, I'm now doing this from my phone in real time. And you can see there we are with the Stream Deck. Again, just another way that they've tried to thoughtfully think through, and I'm not being paid or sponsored um, by this at all. This is just me telling you my experience so far with the device. Let's go ahead and take this home. Thank you everyone for sticking with me through this demo. I know there were some rambling pieces here and there, that's just because I think it's really important that I kind of show you what I'm experiencing as I'm learning about this device. It's really been fun for me. Uh, I'm not, you know, I, I work with technology all the time and I do a lot of different things. And this I can see as being not only a powerful organizational tool, because that's what we do on this channel is we talk about maximizing your time, uh, streamlining efforts and processes and making yourself more productive and more organized. But this could also be a powerful teaching tool and really allow you to uh, kind of expand the way you do things, the way you think through presenting, whether it's PowerPoint or whatever the, the medium you're using is. Zoom meetings, I believe they even have a Zoom plugin. And I know they have one for Microsoft Teams. I'm not 100% sure about Google Meet, but the idea of being able to spend more of your focus on what's in front of you on the screen rather than clicking through and going through all these different uh, places and you know menus and submenus, being able to control that from a device that's tactile in front of you eliminates some of those other possible distractions. Again, this may not be perfect. It may not be the right thing for you. Uh, you may need a larger control panel. They sell these all the way up and I'll link all those descriptions and uh, or I'll link to all of the different uh, Elgato devices down below. Uh, but I think it's something worth considering. So again, thank you so much for being with me. Thank you for uh, staying in hopefully to the end and I will talk to you soon. Have a great one.